Hey yo, what's good? Welcome to my channel, Psychology with Joey. Today with the humble question, what is psychology? Among all science, psychology is maybe the most mysterious one. And it's funny because a lot of psychological language and ideas have reached general public and everyday culture like introverts and extroverts. Nonetheless, there are still many misconceptions about psychology and most people don't even know what a psychology actually does. Are they wearing white coats in mental hospitals? Do they work in a cozy place with a couch where you can lay down and talk about your emotions? Are they experimenting with animals or with humans? Are they controlling us? Well, yes, to everything. Kinda. They're not controlling us though. Ah, uh, may maybe a little bit. It is perhaps this huge range of different possibilities that all fall under the category of psychology that creates this confusion over what the fuck psychology actually is and the fact that a whole bunch of other stuff starts with the prefix psych doesn't help us either. I'd go even so far saying that not even psychologists themselves would agree on a single definition. However, let's start slowly so you get a good idea what psychology is. Because the word psychology comes from the ancient Greek, psych meaning meaning or soul, and logia, study or account. And this is a pretty good definition, the science of the mind. Awesome video. That was good. Okay, maybe there's a bit more we can say about it, because psychology can also be seen as a bridge between physiology and philosophy. Physiology describes and explains the physical makeup of our brain and nervous system, and philosophy, well, is concerned about our ideas and thoughts, more or less good explained. And psychology examines the mental processes that take place in this physical makeup and how they're manifest in our thoughts, speech, and behavior. And then psychology also is interested in looking at this and what it tells us about our minds. And actually all science evolved from philosophy, applying the scientific method to philosophical questions. And here's the big problem in psychology, because the scientific method at its core is for validating things, and therefore we have to be able to measure, test and replicate different things. And this gets pretty difficult when we talk about things like consciousness, memory and perception. And so psychology had quite a strange start. In fact, in the US, psychology started from a philosophical branch with a speculative and theoretical approach about consciousness and the self. While in Europe, psychology was taken with a scientific approach examining mental processes such as sensorial perception and memory under laboratory conditions, still having all the problems with the scientific method. Either way, I don't want to give a history lesson here. Shit happened and then this guy Ivan Pavlov came with its dogs and classical conditioning. And I will make a different video about this topic because it's just so interesting, but basically he proved that animals and well, therefore humans can be trained or conditioned to give a response, even though you don't want to give that response. Details in the other video. But he switched up the game. Now you have a new way in psychology, behaviorism. Studying the behavior. And this is pretty cool because now we can apply the scientific method. Way easier to measure a movement than a thought. Well, and around the same time, Sigmund Freud came with this big interest in thoughts again, especially unconscious thoughts, memory, and everything we just said is just impossible to measure and make scientific. And well, he made a big impact and his inspired psychotherapy is still something you can find in various forms today. Well, then, and finally, in the mid 20th century, both behaviorism and psychoanalysis fell off favor with the return of the scientific study of mental processes. We got cognitive psychology. And then we mix this up with the behaviorism because it was just so cool and well scientific and we got the relatively new paradigm which is cognitive behavioral psychology. Well in this change of the main paradigm in psychology isn't over yet. In fact, with a new advancement in technology, we're getting deeper into the neurological paradigm. And all these paradigmas coexist, and then in each paradigm there are different objectives, like treating the sick to get good, classic clinical psychology. 
treating the good to get better classic sport or high performance psychology or treating nothing and just trying to understand better what's happening and quantifying things like intelligence or personality or comparing normal from abnormal or not even looking at individuals and looking into group dynamics and behaviors instead. All these things coexist right now in psychology. The many branches of psychology that exist today cover basically everything that has to do with mental life and behavior, and the overall scope has extended to overlap with many other disciplines including medicine, psychology, neuroscience, computer science, education, sociology, anthropology, and even politics and economics and law. Basically everywhere where human plays a role, psychology can play a role. It could be considered the most diverse of science. And there are people that debate if psychology is science due to some problems that I mentioned in this video, but it is science, maybe soft science, but let's move on. Psychology continues to influence and be influenced by other science, and its findings concern us all, because in one form or another it informs decisions made in governments, businesses, and media. And in a relatively short time period, psychology has discovered a bunch of things that help us understand better the human mind. Some confirm initial instincts about how the world works, while others are completely strange and hard to believe. Hey, yo, bro, I think you're going a bit off topic here. Huh? What is psychology? Oh, shit, you're right. You know? Well. Psychology everything related to our mental world and behavior as a result. And the four main goals of psychology are to describe, explain, predict and change behavior and mental processes. All the cool stuff that I wanted to mention you will find on this channel in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time. Ahora. Muy bien.